Hey, Len Erickson here with another Purveyor of Light Photoshop Quick Tip. Uh, today we've got a good one. Uh, today we're going to teach you how to take a, a boring background and replace it and put a beautiful sky behind your pictures. Uh, you'll find this technique incredibly useful. Um, here in the example here, I've got a picture of uh, a photo taken in uh, Arches National Park. Uh, in Utah and uh, and as you can see uh, it's, it's a nice shot you know here's a nice formation rock formation and uh, uh, the only problem was the day I was there uh, boy just didn't have any clouds uh, the sky was uh, you know a light blue but there wasn't a cloud in the sky and you know isn't that haven't we all been there um, well one thing for me is I never accept when mother nature didn't come to the call I give Mother Nature a helping hand, and I think we can really enhance this photo and greatly improve it, actually, by replacing the background. And so I'm going to show you how easy that is. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so the first thing I do here is I want to look at the picture itself, and I want to determine where the light's coming from so that I can make sure that I select clouds uh, with the light coming in the same direction. So we can see here that we have light coming from the right side. Shadows are on the left. Okay, so that tells us the light source is coming from the right side. So when we're selecting our, cl our ca clouds, sorry, I can't even talk today, uh, clouds, we have to make sure the light direction matches. Otherwise, it's going to look totally fake. Okay, a lot of times you've seen somebody uh, replace something in Photoshop and it just doesn't work. Okay, uh, the reason for that almost 90% of the time is because you don't pay attention to the light direction. Okay, so just for demonstration purposes, I went ahead and selected two cloud uh, pictures here for us to use. Here's a nice cloud one. Um, it's not bad. Uh, and here's a second one. So let's go ahead and uh, get both of these into our uh, picture. And we will then uh, put this all together for you. So the first thing is I look at the picture and I go, well, I naturally have to select the background out. And each photo is going to be different. Uh, there's so many techniques in in Photoshop on how to make selections. Everything from alpha channels to quick selections to color selections. Um, there's just so many techniques. Which one is the right one to use? Well, it's gonna depend on the photo that you're working with. Now this one here, I've got actually quite a few options. I could select the quick selection tool here and I could just draw around, uh, see how that does. And because this is a really clean photo, and if you look at that, it, it actually did a really nice job. I could probably use this uh, and uh, continue on. So that would be selection choice number one. Okay, but I want to show you a couple extra options in case your photo is slightly different. So I'm going to deselect that, and I'm going to do another method. Here's the one called color range. I'm going to go to select and hit color range. And your picture is going to come up here and you're going to make sure that your selection is set to sampled colors okay fuzziness is zero uh, make sure that localized color clusters is not checked and you'll have your little picture here and your eyedroppers you'll have three eyedroppers the first one is to make your main color selection the second one is to add more shades of color to the selection and the minus one is to subtract colors if you accidentally select something you shouldn't have so let's go ahead and try this so I want to select the background so I just go ahead and start clicking I click the background and I'm going to add the plus key and I'm going to now just keep clicking around adding in the pictures and what I'm doing here is I'm actually picking shades. Remember, it was all blue, but there were just subtle changes. So I'm just clicking in the black areas to select more shades. And that's pretty good. 
but you can see I still got a lot of speckles and a lot of areas that there are just shades that just don't work so what we do here to get our selection a little cleaner is we use this fuzziness slider this means hey let's let's bring in some more shades into our selection so we just slide that over and look at that it cleans it right up okay so just by sliding the slider here now I have a really nice clean selection okay and I can then go ahead and hit OK. So there I go. I've got a nice clean selection. Uh, we're all ready. And now what I want to do is I want to I want to make sure that this this uh, selection is nice and clean on the edges. Okay. Uh, so I want to go up to select, and then I want to go to refine edge. This lets me just work on this selection just a little bit more okay to make it you know as close to perfect as i can uh the first thing i always do i turn on smart radiuses okay and then i'll select a radius and watch the selections change here smooth out and so forth so i want to do a radius of one and a half here i can smooth it i can feather the selection if i wish i can also increase what it's considers on the contrast I can even shift the selection in or out okay so if I take the shift edge uh, I pull it over here you'll notice the selection goes in if I pull it over over here the selection goes the other way right so if I want to do that I can most certainly move the selection in so I look at the selection and that's pretty good and I hit contaminate uh, decontaminate colors and my output is going to be a new layer with layer mask okay if that's not selected just pull down and then select new layer with layer mask okay so then I hit OK and you're gonna see right here we've got another duplicated background layer with a layer mask there's only one little problem here we are the exact opposite of what we should be we have selected the rock formation and left the sky not a problem we just click on the mask here in our layer and then we hit command i command i means invert okay now you'll notice all i did is reverse the mask and now we have a beautiful clean selection okay that we can go ahead and start working with okay so with just that simple steps we now have a clean background we can start playing around here so i'm going to come up here and i'm going to take my first background i'm going to select the move move to and i'm going to drag it up to the picture and then drop it on the picture and there we are okay so now i can go ahead and uh, bring in free transform by hitting command t and I can resize this this photo here to to make it uh, a little more manageable okay and again because we're dealing with a sky and clouds we really don't care about distorting uh, because you, how can you distort a cloud really um, so anyhow just uh, select what you want and you can leave it a little bit large move it in position where you like it okay hit the enter key to keep that and now we're going to drag that behind the background layer so we drop it behind and there we are we're we're dropped so now i can also still move this background around here if i'm not happy with the with the background if i need to make adjustments i can hit command t uh, make it a little bit larger uh, i can stretch it out if i wish okay hit the enter and now i have more to work with i can move it around until i'm happy with the picture that it has okay so that's as easy as it is now you know this is what i said at the beginning of the the demonstration here is light light direction is so important i mean if you look at this and we're honest with each other this doesn't look very good it, 
you could tell the background just doesn't belong there. Um, that's because it's just not matching. Now we could spend a couple hours here trying to tone the colors in and try to make things match up. But the honest truth is, I mean, we could try. So let's see what we can do. If I turn around and hit a curves adjustment tool, and let's just say I'm gonna do a typical S curve. So I'm gonna come in and just take it down, increase the contrast of these clouds, give them a little more depth. Okay, and I'm gonna lock that too. And I'm, I'm like, hmm. It's, it still doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work. Um, could I make it work? Yeah, if I put a lot of time, color balance, change the tones, and so forth. But the fact of the matter is, it just doesn't work. So I don't want to do this one. So this is not going to work. So I'm going to turn off those layers, and I'm going to go get that other cloud. And I'm going to bring this cloud in here by doing the same technique. Click and drag and drop it right in. And again, the same technique. Once I have it in the picture, I can move it around and find what I feel is the best position. Okay. And you'll notice that because the light is coming from the right, this is automatically working better uh, and it's blending more. Now it's just about uh, moving it, free transforming it, and coming out what you're happy with. Okay, no right and wrong in photography, and there's definitely no right and wrong in uh, Photoshop. It's up to your creativity. It's about your looks. But let's go ahead and uh, let's just see how we uh, look now. This doesn't look bad. I'm not even going to go any further than this. But let's go back and uh, hit the... We'll come back to the beginning, okay? There's the what we started with, okay? And... Uh, there's what we went to. So, quite a difference. Okay, so if I group these up together, see, I'll skip this one and this one, and I'll put it in a group because so, it makes it a lot easier to turn things on and off. Okay, turn it off. There's the what we started with, and there's the after. I think we've improved that photo tenfold. And uh, that's how I envisioned the photo when I went there to take this picture. Uh, it was just that Mother Nature didn't cooperate with me that day. And so I'm giving Mother Nature a little helping hand, putting a, a few white puppies in the sky. And uh, I'm happy. And so hopefully you find this technique uh, useful. And I'm sure you can use this on a hundreds of photos that you've taken over the years uh, so go ahead and give it a try if you've got any questions or comments leave them down in the comments section down below uh, and be sure to turn around and hit the subscribe button this way you can uh, get notices and receive these free videos uh, once a week and uh, you'll get a notification in the mail every day that you every week that we release a new one for you so you'll never miss an episode all right all right, till next week, you guys take care.